Hello, this is Evangelist Dr. Robert L. McKim Sr. from Carrollton, Ohio. It's been a little while since I've done a video because I've been trying to gather enough evidence to give to the authorities so they can continue building their case against uh, some of these people that they say they're trolling me, but see, let me find it here again. Internet trolling. It is a person who shows discord on the internet by starting arguments or upsetting people by posting in inflammatory. Well, you know, he is. They said, they said in the comment that they're just trolling me. Well, that, uh, that's not what they're doing. That's not what they're doing. Because of the fact that what they're doing by making this uh, website to defame me, hacking my uh, into my uh, Facebook ministry site. So that's 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 what I use for my website. So basically, you hacked my website because I can't afford a website. So I use uh, Facebook. And let me tell you something. Just because it's social media. It's still my site. Mine. Doesn't belong to you. Belongs to me. I, I created it. It's my property. And my ministry is my trademark. So when you're using uh, anything, McKim Beacon Light Ministry or any words associated with McKim Beacon Light Ministry you're 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 infringing on my trademark which is a, a crime also so you you you're you're actually you're doxing me cuz that is what you're doing cuz doxing means and I showed you before Okay, get my camera here to cooperate. Is inter is an internet-based practice of researching and broadcasting personally in inflammable information about an individual. That is what you're doing to me. The methods employed by uh, employed to acquire this information include. Searching publicly available database and social media websites like Facebook. Hacking, which is what you did also. Social engineering, creating that website. It is closely related to internet vandalism, internet vandalism and Hackivism and doxing may be carried out for various reasons, including to a well, you know, a law enforcement business analyst extortion uh, harassment on the online shaming, which is what you're trying to do. And vigilante ju justice, which is what you're also trying to do. All because I said no to uh, performing a same sex wedding. Ohio law actually calls it menacing by stalking. No person through the use of 
any electronic method or remedy transferring information including but not limited to any computer computer network which is a uh, Facebook computer program which, uh, uh, which is a uh, virus or computer system shall post a message with the purpose to use or and another to commit a violation of well, Division A1 of this session, which is up here. Cause mental distress, for one thing. I've been kind of, you know, worked up over all this. And kind of, you know, been having a lot of stress. Because of all this that's been going on, so you think you you think you're you think you're a winner. You're not a winner. You're a loser. You're a loser. Because for one thing, like I said, I have the law. I know what the law says, and there's nowhere in the Supreme Court decision that says in the hundred and three pages that uh, is here. That says that pastors, churches, or ministers or ministries have to comply to this law. It is built basically solely uh, for the states to recognize same-sex marriages, not not individual, not individuals. Christian churches, Christian ministries, Christian uh, businesses do not have to uh, comply to this law. There's nowhere in this law it says that you have to comply if it violates your faith. You see, the thing is, what is really happening. I know, yeah, first of all, let me finish. See, on, my, on Facebook, they have what's called activity log. So that, you know, I've been keeping track of everything that's been going on. See, the thing is, people also, what they're doing is, well, here's this one guy, he made a Facebook site. And he's the one that asked me to uh, perform same-sex wedding. Gaze for McKim Bacon Ministry. See there, he's uh, taking my trademark. He's taking my trademark and using it for his own uh, defamatory purposes. This guy here, uh, I found out. Well, see, he uh, you can't see it very well, but if you look real close. He says he went to uh, Manchester High School, which is in England, United Kingdom. He's got there, and it's my name, my picture. He made a Facebook site with my information, also to defame, defame me. And this is what also they've done to Renee's picture. Trying to say she's got fetal alcohol syndrome. You're calling Renee's mother a drunk because that is the only way that a, a baby is born with fetal alcohol syndrome is that the mother drank a lot when she was carrying the baby. So you're calling Renee's mother a drunk. I'm not. They are. They are the ones calling Renee's mother a drunk. So are you happy, John? Because you started all this ball rolling a long time ago. Now they're calling your wife a drunk. Renee has cerebral palsy and epilepsy. Renee's mother had too much water. Fluid. Honor when she was carrying Renee. And Renee had too much fluid on her brain. That 
is what causes cerebral palsy, not alcohol syndrome. You people are a, a piece of work. Well, I mean, I, I can say a lot of things, but here's uh, proof. See, the guy that created that, uh, well, he created Clyde Cash Beacon Ministry, which I had uh, Facebook take that one down, and I think they also took down the Robert McKim because I uh, reported him. And right here, he sent me two emails. So there, he created an email with my name, Robert Dot McKim, sixty nine, which you know, you know what sixty nine represents, and also Clyde Case, sixty nine. You know, send him an email, tell him what you think about him. On Facebook, they have he has eighteen, eighteen sites. And he's in various states of the United States as well as other countries. So honestly, it's hard to tell where he really is. Unless he flies all over the place, like Superman. Some of these people think they are Superman. There was an article. Let me find it here. In the uh, Washington Post that says think Christianity is dying no Christianity is shifting dramatically well see that's the problem it's shifting because the Bible says in the last days in 2nd Timothy 4 In the last times, or latter times, some will depart from the faith. That is the shift. They are departing from the, the true faith. And they're being, they're giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. Speaking lies and hypocrisy. As if their conscience is seared with a hot iron. That is what is happening, people. They are, they are, they are believing doctrines of demons. Oh, not boogeyman, demons. Demons. Not the boogeyman, demons. Well, you know, I want to play something here real quick. Oh yeah, first off, uh, someone put something on one of my uh, Facebook posts where I was talking about iPad. And then they posted a link to uh, my Facebook. Well, long story short, people are, are using my fa uh, YouTube channel now to uh, also defame me and my Facebook ministry as well. I wanted to play uh, real quick here. Um, something that the Colonel, Lieutenant Colonel on Jim Baker had said. Second, I want to get lined up here. Before I play it. Whoops, sorry, we're moving the camera around. Read this book, and here I go. This, I, I think I've recommended more books this week than my what? entire life. This is a book called Never Surrender. And the other book that you and Stu Weber put together together 
the the warring the war warrior soul. Mm. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this book because I I feel like I'm at war. I'm in a spiritual mm -hmm. war right now. Mm -hmm. We have we had Jabri, uh, Brigitte, Gabriel. Brigitte. Mm -hmm. yeah. I don't know why nobody had Brigitte, Brigitte. Brigitte. Uh, on the show. Gabriel was and, on the show uh, with us. And you know, I'm afraid with the way America is that if I stick my neck out too far, someone's going to want to cut it off. You know, that's absolutely correct, and that's one of the reasons that America's in the shape that it's in today is that we. Uh, as Christians, every time we pop our heads up mm -hmm. and we try to take a stand against evil, which the Bible in Psalms 94 is very clear, you know, who will take a stand against this evil for me? Who will stand up against these evil doers? Yes. That's talking to us as Christians, and there is a, there's an element of our society that just wants to, uh, to punish us and, and drive us underground, mm -hmm. and you are in a battle, Pastor. You That's were in a right. battle every single day, and the Bible is very clear about that. And the whole idea behind this Warrior Soul book that Stu Weber and I wrote, and mm -hmm. Stu is an old Green Beret from Vietnam, mm -hmm. and the idea is the warrior is not the one that has all the bandoliers and the most modern technology. It's the one that has a transcendent cause. Mm -hmm. And in the case of Christians, it's the one that realizes that our ultimate accountability mm -hmm. is not to man, it's not to the news media, it's not to those around us that want to criticize us, it is to God. Yes. And that's the transcendent. Yes, I have so much I want to talk about with you this week on the show. And you raise your voice against injustice in our country. 36 years in the military, a three-star general, when did you realize your voice of faith was being questioned, that something was going, maybe not, it was going right, but wrong? Yeah. In 2003, I came into the Bush administration as a three-star general, and I was the Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Intelligence. Well. Uh, several of the news media outlets uh, dragged up uh, 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 videos of me speaking at church and Christian events where after 9-11 where I was encouraging people to recognize that this was going to be a long-term battle, mm -hmm. that we were really in a spiritual battle, and I said that the roots of America are Judeo-Christian, and one of the reasons that we are, we are being attacked by these people is because of those Judeo-Christian roots, and that was when the news media went after me with a vengeance, and they called me, you know, the, all the typical names, you know, the radical right, uh, a, an Islamic extremist, I mean, a uh, Christian extremist, uh, an Islamophobe, and all of those things, and uh, it was the first time in my, at that time, 33 years when this all started, it was the first time that I'd ever actually been turned on by the media and and literally uh, excoriated for my faith. And that's, but I survived it. Yes. I'm a stronger man today. Yes. And again, it was all preparation for the real battle. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. During the Black Hawk Down events, I was wounded there in Mogadishu. I, I told some of your staff this last night at dinner, and I want to tell you this because I think it's, represents what we're talking about here. I was wounded there in Mogadishu, but the guy next to me was killed. We both went down, we were hit by a mortar. Uh, we went down, I got up and I looked down and I saw him, I saw that he was dead. And I looked at him and I said, God, why did you take him and not me? He's young, he has children, my children are grown. Why did you take him and leave me? Mm -hmm. I asked that question, that was on the 5th of October, 1993. I asked that question privately, mm -hmm. repeatedly. Why did you take him and not me? I'm ready. <laughs> Ultimately, uh, in 2012, after saying no to Tony Perkins multiple times, I went back to the Family Research Council to be the executive vice president in downtown Washington, D.C. We have taken a biblical stand on marriage. 
We believe in biblical marriage, and we've been very open about that. I'd been there two months, and at 10.41 in the morning, I heard shots in the lobby. I went running, you know, an old soldier, you run to the gun, not away from it. You run to the gun, I ran to the ah. gun. And there was our building manager, Leo Johnson, a very courageous man that had been shot through the arm. Uh, Sorry, that was my cat was, blocking the view of the... A man named Floyd Lee Corkins, and there was a pistol laying there. And, and as I stood there looking at this carnage and contemplating what to do, that man came in to kill us, me, Tony Perkins, and everybody else he could kill. He had 50, he had 100 rounds of ammunition and 15 mm. Chick-fil-A sandwiches. Huh. And he was going to, he told the judge, he said, I was going to smear it in their face. Ah. Uh. As I stood over that, looking at that, the Holy Spirit said to me, I spared you to fight another day. Mm. I spared you for this fight. Wow. And this is the fight for the soul of America. This is why I spared you. Wow. General, you, you, you have taken this stand for God and you have had a long warfare. You've even been in court as a general, be on trial, you might say. Mm -hmm. As I read in your book, Never Surrender. Order this set of books. Yes. This book is amazing. It's in detail. And uh, I know your heart has been broken because the America you love is no longer. Yeah. When did you start seeing this, this bending, this turning? and realizing that, I, I, I mean, some of the things, I could just go on and on, but, but some of the things he's been put on trial for, one of them was, you said uh, George Bush was sent, was put into office by God. I for think that, was that this, right? For such a time as this. Yeah. Here's the bottom line. I, I don't, I don't retract anything that I said. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we are in the battle uh, of our lifetime. We are in a battle that will determine whether this republic survives or not. Right. And I believe that George Bush was, in fact, in office for such a time as this, and that mm -hmm. primarily was the 9-11 events, and he, he responded, and I think he responded appropriately. And, uh, yes, thank you. You said in your book, and I wrote it down, God put presidents, God put presidents like George Bush in office. And then they said, you mean God did it? You know, these, yeah, the, right. this, the reporters, right. you mean, you're right. saying God? Right. You know, and then you went on and you said, and this is, this is kind of, I kind of enjoyed this. But you said, he also put Bill Clinton in office. That's right. <laughs> Yeah. Do you remember saying I that agree. to the press? I agree. And he put Barack Obama in office. And you know... God put all leaders, if you know the Bible. You're, right. That's what you're saying, right. General. That's what I'm saying. And I'm saying, in the case of uh, our current president, we asked for a king, mm -hmm. and we got a king. That's right. It's just like the Israelites. That's right. They asked for a king, and they got a king, but God said, you're not going to like it. Right. And that's what we've done, and now I, I think that uh, Jim and Laurie, I think that what's important is for people to understand that as we come into this 2016 election, this is, a, this is the most important election, I think, in my lifetime, certainly, but I think maybe in the history of America, because our republic is, is at a tipping point. Yes. And, and we will either survive as a republic or it will be changed forever and we will my grandchildren mm -hmm. who are much of my transcendent cause today my grandchildren will never know the america that i've known right. if we don't do the right thing and it's not just about the president it's about legislators it's about people at all levels of government mm -hmm. and we've got to choose wisely we've got to be we've got to be uh in, in an attitude of discernment as we yeah. go to the polls this year yes that's an excellent word, an attitude of discernment. Yesterday, I asked James Rickards. How many enjoyed that yesterday? Wasn't, wasn't he amazing? Incredible. Remember what I asked him? I said, James, would you, would you advise the candidates? He said he's already advised most of them, and, or a lot of them, and yeah. including Mrs. Clinton. Correct. But he said, I, I, said, I won't. 
I, I won't charge them because he said, I don't want to do that. He said, but I want to go. And the thing that God has been dealing with me, no man can be president alone. No man can fill the shoes of that office. If he does, he's delusion. Yeah. <laughs> this office needs a man who will ask God for guidance, of course. Amen. But we need the great leaders to advise them. Yes. Would you advise any of the candidates or would you advise the presidents? You have, I've read your books here and you have the wisdom of, I just have the ages, but age does give us some wisdom. But you've been on the battlefield and God likens so much to warfare this work we do for the Lord. Absolutely, and the fact of the matter is I am campaigning with one of the candidates right now and, and, and doing all I can to advise him. And, and, and ultimately, whoever the nominee is, uh, I am, and I've been contacted by a couple of different campaigns, I will advise whoever the nominee is uh, and give them, share with them my thoughts on national security, on the restoration of our military, on foreign policy, I will I will work with them on all that because I want this next president to turn the country. This is not about taking the country back. Right. It's about restoring the founding principles of America. Yes. We have to yes. restore the founding principles of a constitutional republic. Yes, amen. We'll be right back with more from General Hang on a second. right after this message. <laughs> I got to go through uh, here real quick. He's uh, selling, you know, emergency fruit. Wait, wait, hang wait. a minute. Let me go back. Through the founding fathers, beginning with the 56 men. Hang on. <laughs> that went into Philadelphia on the 2nd of July and signed a declaration that drew a big bullseye on their chest. It meant if they didn't win this revolution, they were going to be executed as traitors to the crown of England, the most powerful country in the world. Mm -hmm. If you believe that God breathed life into this country, God created this country, this country was inspired, then you have a stewardship issue. And the stewardship issue is to do all you can. And that includes voting, and that includes getting involved in the process that our founding fathers gave us when they wrote that constitution. And these Christians that say, I just don't think the church should be involved in politics. Yeah. I think they need to go back to the Bible and, and, and look at what the Bible says right. about being good stewards. We yes. have to be good stewards of this nation. We've got to vote. Yes. We've got to get involved in, the, in what's going on. Absolutely. I'm convinced, and one of the warnings God gave me in prison was because I was involved, I was not involved with politics as such, but I was involved with politicians because I had presidents on my program. So let me just, I don't know if the lady's still here right now. She just brought me a whole stack of my magazine. Yes, she did. From, from uh, years and years ago. Mm -hmm. And on one edition was me and Jimmy Carter. Mm -hmm. and, and in the White House with Mrs. Carter and, and getting some, you know, we were getting some awards together, but but then with Jimmy Carter on the cover. Mm -hmm. And then the, the next week, Ronald Reagan and I were up, was on the cover of my own magazine. Right. And uh, I was flying on Air Force One one week with Jimmy Carter, laying hands on him on Air Force One, and then being with Ronald Reagan, discussing his faith in Jesus Christ. That's right. My, so God spoke to me that if I had any ability, and I can pray, anybody can pray, I could pray for presidents. I was not to divide. I was not to say, well, I won't pray for a Democrat, or I won't pray for this one, or I won't pray for that one. But we were to visit and minister to whosoever will. Right. But I believe if we don't get involved in all areas of government, America is doomed, and if we are in trouble, the church has got to step forward yes. and take right. back yes. right. our freedom of religion. Now, in your book, Never Surrender, you write about the difference between freedom of religion and freedom of worship. 
Do you, do you think there's a difference? What's the difference? This is the issue that I have a deep passion for today, and it's an issue that I'm talking to people all over the country about. When our founding fathers fought a revolution, came in and wrote a constitution, the state of Virginia demanded a Bill of Rights. Ten amendments to the constitution. It actually was like 12, and they narrowed it down. Mm -hmm. What's the first thing they dealt with? And if you say to a lot of Americans they dealt with freedom of worship, they'd say, yeah, that's right. And that's wrong. They dealt with freedom of religion. Now, what does that mean? It means that I can not only believe what I want to believe, but it means that I can live my faith because the very next thing they gave us was freedom of speech. And then they gave us freedom of the press and freedom of assembly and then the right to petition our government for redress of grievances. It was all part of reinforcing the idea of freedom of religion. So when I own a, uh, a, a business and I refuse to do something that is counter to my faith, mm -hmm. and the government sues me and takes my business because I won't violate my faith, what they're doing is forcing you to accept freedom of worship. Remember that Adolf Hitler allowed the church in Germany to worship. Mm -hmm. He gave them freedom of worship. He said, you can worship, right. but keep it in the church or in your home. Don't bring it into the public square. And the only guy that stood up to him was Dietrich Bonhoeffer. But mm -hmm. what's My happening friend. today <laughs> is they're trying to force us to accept freedom of worship, meaning... Uh, if, if I say I'm not going to sign this uh, marriage license for a same-sex couple as Kim Davis did in Kentucky, mm -hmm. and she was put in jail for it. Unreal. Can you believe that? It's unbelievable. But she was standing on what she believed to be was her constitutional right to freedom of religion. But what they were saying to her was, no, you have freedom of worship. You can believe what you want to believe, and you can worship in your church, but mm -hmm. you cannot do that mm -hmm. in the public square you can't live your faith. And I'm telling you, if America doesn't wake up and start rejecting this idea of freedom of worship versus freedom of religion, we're not going to have any freedom. That's right. At all. Of any That's kind. Right. Of any kind. General. That's all I want to say right there. I wanted to play.